When it comes to parasites, people don't realize that they inhabit our bodies. So parasites are important to the ecosystem. They are something that is always going to be around, but what can happen is that we can get parasites in our body and they can get to a point where they are overtaking because they find a favorable ground for them to be able to stay and continue to grow. What I want us to go over is some of the signs of parasites inhibiting your body. And I don't think a lot of us realize how common this actually is and that many of us can actually benefit from doing something like a parasite cleanse. You know, when we look at the heavy metals that have been included in so many different things over the years, whether it's products that we've been using in our food and water, there's so much that goes into our body that is foreign. And this is firmly why I believe that there is the highest number of cancer cases that we have ever seen and cancer all over the body because we have so many toxins and heavy metals and we don't look after our gut health. And so I want to make sure that as I continue to grow into adulthood, if I decide that I do want to have children, if God decides to bless us with that, I want to make sure that my body is at the most favorable position that it can be because as I mentioned with the candida, you don't want to pass things on, right? So when it comes to the signs, digestive distress is number one, right? Constipation, diarrhea, persistent gas, bloating, IBS, SIBO, leaky gut, potentially nutritional deficiencies, restless nights. Uh, a big one for me is clenching my teeth while I sleep. This is not a normal thing for us to be doing. And so I'm really excited to see if this is something that's gonna lighten up. Insomnia, teeth grinding, um, unexplained itchiness, like itchy ears, uh, itchy nose, or your, your, your butt area, okay? So as I mentioned, there's gonna be some things that are like taboo that we don't normally talk about, but these are so important. And one of the things that I've struggled with for sure is itchy ears. So I'm really, and actually an itchy nose, especially this year. I traveled to the Dominican this year and I ended up getting a gut infection. Um, so that's another reason why this is important for me to do. Being sick on and off throughout the years and traveling different places, having dogs my entire life. I kiss my dogs, I don't care what you say, but you can pass parasites along that way. Um, and I guess that I should also say like, you know, from contaminated water, not cooking our food properly, um, intimate contact with other people who potentially have it, have parasites um, or even candida. Candida can be passed along as well. So like if you're struggling with a yeast infection and you go and get intimate with a partner, you can pass that on. It's not a disease guys, but it is something that, you know, you have to be careful of because of the fact that these things can be passed on. So with that being said, mental brain fog so like difficulty concentrating or persistent brain fog unusual cravings like desire for sweets or sudden food sensitivities appetite changes where your increased appetite or decreased appetite but your activity level hasn't changed weight fluctuation so unexplained unexplained weight loss or weight gain persistent fatigue which is something i've dealt with right from when i was much too young um, you know, feeling tired, lethargic, or apathetic without a clear reason, emotional instability, so anxiety, depression, and nervousness. And like our gut is directly linked to our brain. So if we are having gut issues, we're gonna start seeing these mental health issues come through, like depression, anxiety, uh, nervousness, not the inability to think and concentrate properly. Um, then the other one is, is skin concerns. So unresolved eczema, which I had when I was a kid, psoriasis. Um, so I did have pityriasis after I just got the vid <laughs> the last time, which was a full body rash that lasted for eight weeks for me. So that's another big one for me. Um, hives or other different rashes reoccurrent yeast infections or UTIs, which I was getting all the time prior. It was kidney infections, urinary tract infections, uh, yeast infections, and that was something that I was struggling with through my junior high to high school years. Luckily, I'm not struggling with that as an adult now, but it's still really important to make sure that my, my gut is not holding on to some of these things, even if I'm not necessarily flaring. 
Um, another one is intimacy issues. So sexual health dysfunction, low libido, libido, libido. Okay. So you're, you're constantly feeling like your libido is low. Um, you can, another one is like gum health. So if your gums are constantly bleeding, soreness, not associated with exercise in your muscles and your joints, and then difficulty breathing. Okay. And I have struggled with asthma since I was a kid. So this is something that I am really excited to do because I have a lot of those things on that list. Now that list in and of itself is short form compared to all of the different symptoms that can happen when you are struggling with parasites, heavy metal toxins, toxins in and of themselves, and candida overgrowth. So some of the things that people don't realize is like, oh, like this must just be an adult thing. No, this specific cleanse that I'm doing, which is through uh, Rogers Hood, is actually for anybody three years old and older. I know that there's been a lot of cases that I've seen where, you know, kids are nonverbal and they end up going through a parasite cleanse and they are able to speak again because we need to remember that our brain is also a spot for them to want to go and nest. I know that this sounds crazy. I know that this sounds wild. We are preparing and detoxing my pathways right now to make sure that this cleanse is successful. So that's what we're currently doing this first week. So when it comes to the gutty in and of itself, we are doing a bit of a colon cleanse. So when we are pulling the extra feces that have been stuck in our colon, it's gonna make it that much easier for us to be able to get things out instead of having things stick in there. So when it comes to the pathways that we want to clear and detox, so like I said, the colon, which is ensuring regular bowel movements, which was something that I was already having, but something that we want to make sure that if there is extra feces stuck anywhere in our colon, that we're able to get that out, um, our live, that our liver and bile ducts are functioning properly, lymphatic system is functioning properly so i did go for a lymphatic massage a couple of weeks ago it was absolutely heavenly i'm gonna go for another one in the next little bit so i'll definitely take you guys on that journey but i couldn't believe how different i felt after and prior to that i was actually we got these new pillows off of amazon and for whatever reason i had this itch in my nose i couldn't use the pillows it felt like it was in the back of my throat and it lasted for weeks and i was just constantly sneezing constantly stuffed up i was like on way too many uh decongestants just trying to be able to breathe and once i went for the lymphatic massage it cleared and went away no joke guys okay so then we also need to make sure that your skin is good to go so that you're promoting sweating like sauna sessions or exercise. Obviously, as a personal trainer and a bodybuilder, I am exercising, I'm sweating, so no worries in regards to that. Lungs, so practicing deep breathing um, or gentle aerobics. And obviously, this is something that I do when I am doing my Christian meditations is focusing on breathing. Kidneys, we want to make sure that they that we stay hydrated to filter the waste from the blood and then our glymphatic system is prioritizing sleep for brain detoxification now this is something that i'm still getting better at i love the early mornings but i also love late nights and those two don't correlate so really just trying to make sure that my sleep schedule is as consistent as possible for the next month seven days a week like i'm not waking up later on the weekends just because it's the weekend and going to bed later i am working my buns off to try to make sure that I'm aligning this but as I know that you guys feel the same way there is it feels like there's never enough time in the day but I need to flip my perspective on that that I always have enough time and that I'm always going to be able to rock this schedule because mindset is everything our pre-cleanse to-do list is gradually reducing animal products and processed foods and sugar over the course of a week so i over the last couple of days like i've cut dairy and any real processed foods the only thing that i'm not going to be cutting is my animal products so i do go farm fresh which is a lot different than what we're buying straight out of the grocery store where they are pumped with different things um, no guarantee on the antibiotics, but I always try to go antibiotic free meat um, and eggs and I make sure that I cook everything thoroughly. So I feel very confident about keeping that in. But as a bodybuilder, I am not willing to risk my muscle loss 
As I mentioned earlier, I know that there's vegan bodybuilders out there, but it's just something that I can't personally do myself. And if I'm doing absolutely everything else, they had said that it is okay if some people do wanna keep some meat in there. So we'll see how this ends up going. But as I mentioned yesterday, before I even started this, I'm 99% sure that I passed what I believe is a fluke. So I might as well just start talking to you guys about this. So I think I passed a worm yesterday before I even started. And I think it was from taking the fire cider that I showed you guys. So the different ways that you're going to be able to excrete these parasites, blowing your nose, um, peeing, pooping, sweating, as well as like, I'm gonna be doing a fulvic soak that I'll get into. So it can come from your skin as well. A big reason why we are doing this detox for the seven weeks is to be able to make my body's natural response being a bit more comfortable as we're expelling the parasites and toxins. So the truth is, is that a lot of the time it might feel uncomfortable and that indicates a successful detoxification. Now there is something called Herxheimer effects and this is something I'm really familiar with because it was the same thing that happened to me with Candida is like when you drop these things really quickly and you're starting to pull these toxins from your body, what ends up happening is there's this die off effect and that's what the Herxheimer effects are. So your body is going into defense mode. So the truth is, is that you may end up experiencing things such as bloating, gas, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps. You might experience joint and muscle aches, anxiety, depression, irritability, emotional fluctuations, skin breakouts, rashes, itching, intense desire for certain foods, particularly um, refined sugar, fatigue, headaches, insomnia, flu-like symptoms of fever, chills, and body aches, noticeable uh, mucus release in your stool, urine, or nasal discharge, and this is super rare, but even hallucinations and paranoia. Now, I'm not worried about that happening. It is something that would be very rare. But what I do know is that it feels like you have the flu. That's what ends up happening. So we just want to make sure that we are trying to open up these pathways to make it easier on my body to be able to detox and cleanse these things out. And this is going to help with those die-off sy symptoms not being as severe. So I am really excited to see how this continues for me and it's just gonna be a wild journey, okay? So I'm open, I'm honest, I know that I'm gonna probably get some crazy questions coming through and we're gonna be able to keep growing on this journey about being able to look after our health and be able to advocate for our health and know that there are holistic approaches that we can take to better ourselves without always feeling like we're jumping on medications because I know that a lot of the symptoms that I listed there, a lot of people feel like they need medications for them. So I'm excited to be the guinea pig and show you guys this journey. So let's get into the next scene. Ambiance set in the bathroom. The renovation is done in here. So the lights are dimmed, ready for my first bath which is also going to be my first fulvic soak. So I just finished doing some dry brushing, got some water in the bath now, and I need to put three to four teaspoons of this stuff into my bath water, soak for 30 minutes, get out, let it sit for 30 minutes, and then take my camera with the flash to see what's in the water. So it's time for us to soak and see if anything comes out. This is what four teaspoons of this stuff looks like in the water. This is absolutely crazy. I am so excited to see what goes down. I stole this photo so that you guys can see what a fulvic soak typically looks like if you see a worm in it. Now, this is what my fulvic soak turned out like. Do you guys see all of the squiggles that are going on here? It is absolutely insane because I was like, hey, like... I see all these flecks, but I see all these imprints in the water that look like worms. And I needed to reach out for some help because I was really confused. This is my first time doing this. I'm not sure exactly what it is that I'm looking for, but I feel like this is really kind of strange. Because I wasn't sure what I was seeing or what I was even really looking for, I decided to reach out on the Facebook group and I couldn't believe the answer that I got from one of these girls. I was like, wow, this is different than what everybody's seeing. I better reach out to Roger's Hood. 
So I reached out to Kim, the owner of Rogers Hood, and she got back to me right away. And I was shocked when she said that she hasn't seen this before either. She said she was going to consult with her team and I was mind blown. While I was waiting to hear back, my Facebook post was blowing up. I knew that that thing on the right hand side was definitely a worm, but I really wasn't sure what the rest of this was. It looks like worms of all different shapes and sizes, flecks of I don't even know what, but I was so mind blown at what I was seeing in the entire freaking bathtub. Like there literally had to be hundreds. While compulsively watching my videos, I heard back quickly from Kim that nobody else on her team had ever seen that before either. They see that oily film on top a lot, but it looks like the worms could be just beneath the surface, leaving those outlines. She said it's hard to say where they all came from in my body, but that the dry brushing probably helped open pathways for them to come out from. But I could probably take Take a guess because there's no way that all of those came directly out of my skin if you know what I'm putting down. This is something that is a first that they've ever seen before so I was so excited but also shocked at the same time that I genuinely needed to clarify like is this actually what we're seeing and she confirmed that yes those are all worm outlines that was a confirmed worm on the edge of the tub and that the flakes are heavy metals and possibly a little bit of dead skin but come on now this is absolutely mind blowing to think that all of these little critters are literally worms coming from my body like what what to say i was mind blown at what i ended up seeing in that tub would be an absolute understatement but I am obsessed. I am so excited for this to continue. I literally felt like a new person the next day. I had the best sleep that I had in the longest time, but then I felt kind of back to normal the next day. So this is telling me that if I pulled all of this with just a fulvic soak, imagine what this cleanse is gonna do for me, guys. I am so excited. So in this, I have now partnered with Rogers Hood. You are able to use the discount code AF10 to save on your cleanse journey because this is absolutely crazy. I cannot believe it. So the final thing, because I know that there's always gonna be skeptics and rightfully so, like was this in the fulvic soak in and of itself? How do you know that this is actually for real and that this isn't just something in the water? So the next day, because you can do two in a week, I just did a foot soak. Now I'm gonna show you guys the video. That's how we're gonna close this one off. And next week, you're gonna see how the start of the cleanse goes and it is going to be a wild, fun, freaking journey. I hope you're ready. If you look at the bottom left corner, you'll see a fluke, that circle with the dot in it, and a ton of heavy metals. Although we did not yield the exact same results as my full body soak, this goes to prove any of the skeptics wrong as to if it's something in the water, if it's the fulvic soak in and of itself, because it was all from the same package. So aside from those couple of flukes, there's not much else that I really saw in the water. But again, I will become a parasite master by the end of this. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you hit that notification bell because this is not a journey you're going to want to miss.